Hey Man Cave, this is Bob for the Bob Zenscale Man Cave and today is part 5 from building my Helix Mountain. And in this episode we're doing those finishing touches to the scene which is putting on trees, uh, foliage, maybe other some little rocks and sticks and you know tree trunks and all those other little pieces, a bridge, I've got a waterfall. I have all these little pieces that I'm going to put on there and make the scene look and pop out more realistically. And so I got to take a look at those little kind of things that are missing and see how the scene looks. So as of right now, the door is mounted to the helix. And so we'll see this all in its glory at the end of this video. But for right now, we got to tell you how, how it got there. So let's go take a look. Okay, we're going to start off with making this bridge. Uh, I got to put in some uh, piers and I had to cut off the bottom of it to make it uh, the right height because uh, it was sticking up a little bit too tall. And I'm going to put them right in here. Well, I took an old Amtrak passenger car. I believe it was a 79 foot or 70 foot. I'm not exactly sure, but it fit. And but it's HO. This is HO scale. And I took off the top of it, and this is just the base. I made sure it fit right. And I cut it all down. And here's the top. And I could have a choice of one style or the other. And I'm going to choose to go with this observation car top. Now I modified this whole car, cut off the ends so it looks more like a tunnel. So this is going to be an end scale tunnel. Now this was a little bit too uh, wobbly so I needed to sand down or file down that uh, the bumpiness on this side of the door and I'm just using an old track saw. And I cut that down, glued on the pieces and this is what it looks like. Now the bridge is removable and that's how it looks. So right now we're going to do some coloring with some burn umber and some black and I'm going to uh, mix like a 16 to 1 ratio and putting on the burnt umber first and then I'm going to put on the black and then uh, that's pretty much how I'm going to do it. And when you're done coloring all your rocks I spray it with uh, wet water, uh, scenic cement, and water. Okay, as you can see, this is kind of what I have so far on there. It's uh, it's coming along a little bit. I've added in some more rocks and stuff around this area down here. Some more rocks up in this area make sort of a, a waterfall kind of catch here where it just kind of hits and pools up and then falls down farther. and trying to make it a little bit more defined along the edges here. Added in some more trees up in this top area, tree down here, more foliage and so forth. Added in um, some clump stuff here and various uh, sticks that I actually got out of the yard. You know, fall out of my tree in the yard and I'm actually using those and putting them on the layout. I got a lot more trees to uh, put on there and got some uh, toothpick trees as well and so these aren't going to be full height I'm going to cut these down a little bit so they're not as tall but uh, you'll get the point so on this whole side right here I'm going to cover with trees up to probably up down around in here I'll put some trees in and the rest will kind of be uh, um, Maybe some rocks and uh, some other moss or whatever growing on the side of the, the, the hill. Uh, probably not under these overhangs where it'll just kind of look barren rock. But uh, on this side, there's going to be some trees going down over in here along this side. But then it's not going to be any trees on this side. It's going to be more, uh, more rock uh, added on there. I think I'm going to try and uh, 
change how it kind of looks a little bit and see how that all works out. That's basically how you put in trees. Just drill a hole, put some glue in there, stuff it in there, and let it dry. Stick a rock on with some Cena glue, trim up some trees before I put them in, stick them in there with some glue, and keep on going till I'm all done. There's some clump foliage, medium green, and some other stuff that's a little bit lighter in color. Lay down some scenic glue, put the foliage on there, and uh, keep putting some more on. Now to keep putting more trees and foliage on this area, and some down in here, we'll move on to the next step. Okay, near the middle of this waterfall area, the water's coming down this direction, I have this rock fall that's right here, and the theory is I'm going to put the water running down to here, going to kind of collect and run along this side and start falling off over the sides here down to the uh, lower falls. So what I wanted to do was kind of have some water fall over this side and some come over here. I'm going to put some realistic water. I got some leftover stuff from my uh, trestle build. It's not a whole lot in there but I'm going to see what happens, but in order to do that and keep some water kind of build up in here, I needed to seal it, so I took some Elmer's glue and just filled in this whole area right down in here as much as I could to keep the water, realistic water, from uh, seeping out underneath the waterfall too much. If it does seep out a little bit, at least I'll have something that'll um, stay in that area and look a little bit more real and kind of uh, give some sort of um, pooling effect I guess. Now I just need to make the actual waterfall pieces with uh, the water effects from Woodland Scenics. I'm going to do that next. Okay to make uh, a waterfall you need to first measure how long your waterfall is going to be in my first section it's going to be uh, about 14 or 15 inches that I need to travel from the top down to that first area. I got a piece of wax paper here. I know it's kind of hard to see. Or you can use a non-stick pan, an old frying pan your wife doesn't want you to mess up a real good one with. You know, just get an old one. And then uh, take your water effects from Woodland Scenics and just start making your trails. a little spreading stick and uh, kind of spread it out so it's even and all the tracks that you made are touching and then I kind of smear it smear it side to side in this case I'm kind of making a uh, thin waterfall don't necessarily need to make a really long one, or I mean a really wide one at this point. The neat thing about this is that it's going to dry clear, and so it's going to look like uh, fast running water, and later I can put some uh, little water effects on it, make, mix in a little bit of white uh, with it, and it'll look kind of foamy and just kind of paint, just kind of uh, dry brush the outside of it. And so we're going to let this dry for 24 hours. I'll have one waterfall done. So I'm going to make a few more, wait the whole day and put them on the layout. This is dried for 24 hours and I'm just going to take the wax paper and, and peel back your waterfall piece right here and you get this nice flexible water in one piece as much as you can get anyway 
Gotta be careful not not to rip it. And there we go. We have this long uh, piece of uh, waterfall. Okay, now that I take uh, my waterfall piece here, I'm just going to kind of lay it up here and see how it looks. See where it's going to fit. And take my other one, and lay that up here. Okay, I poured some realistic water down this area where the waterfall is supposed to go just to see where the contours were where the actual water or liquid would flow and come in here and it seeped a little bit through that area I didn't want it to seep through but I guess it found a <clears throat> found a crack but so I said well I'll just let it run and then I dribbled the rest of that bottle on down here to the bottom of the waterfall Hey, I know this looks a little uh, odd, but you're looking at the top of this door, looking down the way the water is going to flow, or all the way down. So I'm going to be putting on these uh, strips of uh, water, and I'm going to attach them in here. I'm going to use uh, some uh, water effects as the glue, and I'm also going to put a couple straight put a straight pin in to kind of hold it in place while it's uh, setting up and drying. Okay then I'm just going to put some water effects right here to use that as a glue. Uh, and then I'm just going to put the dried waterfall into that area gluing it down in place so that it looks like it's rolling over the edge of the wall. And then put a pin in there to keep it in place. Well, I went and got some uh, lichen from uh, Woodland Scenics. This is dark green. Got a rather big bag of it, so I can use it other where, other places on the layout. But <clears throat> doing a little test here, and sprayed it down here with uh, uh, scenic cement that's watered down, and it didn't quite hold that very well. So I'm. Uh, moving to the Elmer's glue and gluing uh, the pieces in as I go. Spread it out a little bit, lay the, lay the lichen down on there, and I'm also going to put lichen down through the tree area, the tree line, kind of fill in a lot of this uh, gray rock. It's not going to be completely covered with green, but it's going to have sporadic pieces that jump out at you and say, hey, there's rock underneath there. Okay, what I did here is I added in some more uh, foliage, added in some more trees, and then I took some uh, Aquanet hairspray and some blended turf and some fine turf in uh, this green grass kind of uh, color, and also this blended turf color. I put those into my little shaker bottles that I made out of some pill bottles and spray, sprayed the hairspray over the top sprinkled more of the grass on top of there kind of fill in and make the trees a little bit more fuller looking and the added effect is the extra hairspray gets all over the ground and then you, when you sprinkle it all over there you get uh, more grass color onto the ground in between the kind of the rock. So you got uh, kind of that added effect and some extra foliage making everything look a little bit thicker. So here's the roundhouse and turntable, the helix, and my door. I mounted it today just to see how it would look. And as you can see, I've put in a bunch of additions. I have water flowing down. And 
I still have to, uh, of course, scenic the bottom of this waterfall where the water is going to flow into it. But I have a couple waterfalls split off from these rocks up here. And this little Y kind of look to it from the original picture. So, uh, going to modify some more of this water and get it uh, looking a little bit more realistic, I think. And uh, fill in some more pieces as I go over time. But right now, it's uh, pretty much where it's going to be. Um, got a lot of modifications left to do. Got to you know, fill in the roads and the tunnel area on both sides. Uh, I can take this off and you can see the rocks in the water a little bit better. And let's put it back on. There we go. And on this side I have to uh, put this wall on. And this area right down here is probably going to need some modification here. All I need to do is open up the door. I can see the helix. And you can see it uh, pretty much clears my track. Enough clearance. I plan on putting uh, <clears throat> sort of a little pool down here and it going and draining underneath this uh, track here coming out to the other side and this will be sort of a uh, you know little stream or part of a river or something like that but I want to be able to get some water get some uh, water effects hang them from here as the water comes off and drain into the pool and it's flexible enough that when I open this up and it scrapes across the top here it's not going to uh, ruin the, the effect. Uh, the water is loose it's just hanging here and so it looks pretty good. And as you can see here's the waterfall hung on the helix and it's also got the side pieces on there for uh, you know just to see what it looks like with it all put together still have to model the rest of the the sides of course but I want to make sure everything fits right and if I have to modify anything I can do so well, there you go man cavians that's been part five of how to, I built my helix mountain and as you can see there's a lot of detail going into this one um, putting in the bridge pieces, putting in the waterfall, putting in the trees, all the foliage, adding more rock, uh, coloring that rock and so forth. Um, it just the overall enormity of it. You know, I almost call it Bigfoot Mountain because it's no small feat to accomplish. You know, it's just one of those, it's probably going to be named Bigfoot Mountain when I'm done but oh man there's a lot to go there I still have a lot left to do you know it's just uh, a lot of work but it's enjoyable at the same time and if you're not having fun doing model railroading why are you doing it in the first place it really why so I'm having fun I hope you're having fun watching it, and if uh, you want to see more, just comment below and say, Bob, I want to see part six. I can hardly wait for part six. Part five took a long time to make, yes, you know, life gets in the way, but I want to see part six. And I'll have a part six out soon enough, probably before Christmas, uh, part six should come out. So, as always, Mancavians, happy model railroading, and stay off those tracks. Bye. So if you like what you saw here today, go ahead and click subscribe down here below or follow my Facebook, Google+, Twitter, and my Instagram links down here below in the comments. Also, click on one of my other links 
for videos as well. As always, Mancavians, happy model railroading. Stay off the tracks. Bye.